talking about? Did someone tell you a joke? I love jokes. Well, are you gonna tell me? What are you laughing about? What's so funny? Oh, this picture? Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. It's a picture of an animal with a flat beak and webbed feet like a duck, and it lays an egg like a chicken, so it's kind of like a bird, but it's got the furry brown body of a mammal, like a human or a cat or a rat. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is a pretty funny looking animal, but you wanna know something? This picture wasn't meant to be a joke. Believe it or not, this is a real animal. It's called a platypus. It's okay, Squeaks. You're not the only one who thought platypuses were too silly to be real. A long time ago, scientists saw a picture of a platypus for the first time. They argued for years about whether platypuses really existed. See, a platypus is a mammal. Mammals are warm-blooded animals that have hair or fur and feed their babies milk when they're young. Dogs, cats, monkeys, rats, and even people are all mammals. And most of these mammals have some other things in common too, like having live babies instead of laying eggs. It's pretty surprising to learn about a furry mammal with a face like a duck that lays eggs. Platypuses are weird and wonderful, but they're also very good at living in their habitat. A habitat is a place where plants and animals live. In their habitat, they can find everything they need to survive and grow. And all the strange features of the platypus are useful for the habitat they live in. If platypuses look like a combination of a duck and a beaver, that's actually perfect for them. Platypuses live in a place called Australia, and they spend some of their time on land and some of their time in the water. And because they find their food in streams and rivers, they have special body parts to help them out. Take another look at the platypus's feet. Do you notice anything about their shape or their structure? Yeah, they're webbed like a duck's feet. That means platypuses are fantastic swimmers. They use their front webbed feet to paddle themselves forward in the water and their back feet and big beaver-like tail to steer. And they're very prepared for water safety. When they're swimming, platypuses close up their eyes, their ears, and their nostrils. They have special folds of skin that cover up their eyes and ears to keep water from getting in. That way, they can stay underwater long enough to swim around and find food. <laughs> That's a great question, Squeaks. The platypus does have a face like a duck, but they don't quack like a duck. They use their duck style bill to help them find food. That leathery bill is super sensitive to other living things hiding in the water. When the platypus is underwater, its eyes and ears are folded away, and it can find food using only that very sensitive schnoz. Platypuses eat food they find at the bottom of the river, like worms or insects. They scoop it up and keep it safe in pouches inside their cheeks. And once they're back on the surface, they're ready to chow down. Platypuses don't have teeth like most mammals do. I told you it's weird, and it's going to get weirder. Platypuses can chew, but they don't need teeth to do it. When platypuses hunt, they gather up bits of dirt along with their food. That helps them mash up their mouthful before they swallow. They have flat, hard parts inside their beak to help too. And even though platypuses have webbed feet for paddling around the water, they need to be able to walk around on land too. So when they need to walk or use their claws to dig, they can actually change the structure of their feet by pulling back the webbed skin that helps them when they're swimming. They use those claws to dig burrows at the edge of the water. That's where female platypuses lay their eggs. And those eggs hatch into, okay, wait, I think this is my favorite platypus fact. Do you know what baby platypuses are called? <laughs> Pups is a great guess, but a baby platypus is called a puggle. It's the cutest thing in the universe. Just look at these puggles. They're so super cute. But if you're wandering around Australia and you see a platypus, you should leave it alone. Because here's another platypus fact. They can be poisonous. I know, right? 
Male platypuses have something called spurs sticking out of their back feet, and they can use them to release venom. They mostly use it against other platypuses, and even though their venom doesn't kill platypuses or humans, it hurts a lot. But platypus venom might have a cool use for us humans. Scientists are trying to use it to invent new kinds of medicines. Oh, yeah, you're right, Squeaks. How do we know platypuses are mammals like people and cats and rats instead of a bird or something else? You can tell an animal is a mammal if it has hair and gives milk to its babies. Platypuses do have hair and they do give milk to their babies. But most mammals also give birth to their babies. Platypuses and their relatives, echidnas, are part of a special type of mammal group called monotremes. And monotremes don't give birth the same way most mammals do. Instead, they lay eggs that hatch later. A very long time ago, around the time of the dinosaurs, the earliest mammals were much more closely related to birds and reptiles. And they probably laid eggs too. Mammals that gave birth to babies probably came later. So, if animals like the platypus were here on Earth first, maybe we're the weird ones. Hey Squeaks, <laughs> well that's a new look for you. Oh, you're pretending to be a platypus. For research? What kind of research? Ah, oh, I see. Squeaks just learned all about the platypus. It's an animal that looks really funny, but all the funny things about it help it to survive in its habitat. A habitat is a place where living things make their home, like forests or coral reefs or almost any place on Earth. In their habitat, they can find everything they need to live and grow. So the platypuses must be onto something, and Squeaks figures he might as well join in. Oh, now you're ready for the next step of your research? Platypuses live in a specific habitat in only one place on Earth. So you want to learn more about the place that they're from? And you want to get started by looking at pictures of the Earth taken from way up in space? Great idea! These pictures can show us the different features of a place on the Earth's surface. And we can learn a lot about a place that way. The part of the Earth you want where platypuses live is Australia. Here's a picture of what Australia looks like from space. It's a kind of map that tells us about the features of the area. Those features are things like water or mountains or other things we can see from way up high. Australia definitely is a fascinating place. Watch this. If you put Australia over North America, you can see how big it is compared to our whole continent. But let's look at our picture of Australia again. What do you notice about it? That's right! A lot of the ground in the inside parts of Australia is orange or red. Even though this picture is taken from far away, you can still tell what color the ground is. What do you think about that? Ooh, that's a great observation! Squeak says the orangey red ground in Australia reminds him of the red planet Mars. You know, Mars and Australia are both reddish in color for the same reason. They have something called iron oxide in their dirt. That's another word for plain old rust, like you might see on a piece of old metal. In Australia, the big red area you notice is called the outback. The outback is an amazing part of the world. My favorite place is is Uluru. It's a huge red rock about 350 meters high. That's taller than the Eiffel Tower in France. What else do you notice? <laughs> yes, you're right. That's a lot of blue all around it. That blue is water. The picture is telling us there's lots of water around the edges of Australia, but not very much in the middle. Yeah, the outback has many different environments, but you're right. A lot of it is sand and uncovered rocks. Yeah, that does remind you of a desert, huh? Well, many areas in the outback are desert, and many deserts, including the outback, are hot. How was the outback formed? Well, on Earth, deserts can form for a lot of different reasons. 
When we look at the map, we can find clues. See how these areas along the northern coast are more green? They get more moisture from the ocean. But in the middle here, it's far away from any ocean. So the air and land is much drier. With so little water, a desert formed there. Even though there's very little moisture or water in deserts, lots of animals and plants live in dry habitats. And those living things are a great example of what it means to adapt to your environment. Adaptation is when living things change their bodies or their actions to fit the place that they're living better. Yes, kind of like wearing a sweater in cold weather or sunglasses on a bright day. Exactly. Except animals adapted to their habitats over a very long time. And you can just buy sunglasses from the store. Sunglasses are a great way to adapt to a bright, sunny desert. But there are other ways to adapt to deserts, too. Take the red kangaroo, for example, an animal that lives in the outback. Big animals like the red kangaroo need lots of water to survive. And there isn't much of it in the outback. So sometimes kangaroos have to travel a long way to get to water. The way the red kangaroo has adapted to these long trips is by spinning on themselves. It seems gross, but the spit has a really great job, or function. It helps the kangaroo cool down in the hot desert sun. The spit cools the kangaroo off as it dries, a lot like our sweat. Gross and cool, but it's not the only way animals in the outback can get water. This lizard, the thorny devil, looks fearsome and spiky. Those spikes are special structures that can help defend against predators who want to eat them. But they also collect drops of dew for the thorny dragon to drink. It has a personal water dish on its back. And check out the giant centipede. In order to survive in the desert, the giant centipede comes out at night when it's cooler. The giant centipede also has strong pincers and venom to help catch its prey. <laughs> oh, don't worry, buddy. I'm sure Robot Rat isn't on its menu. Oh, you're right. All these adaptations mean the outback is the perfect habitat for these creatures. People live there too and have for a very long time. But there's one other thing the outback is great for. Remember your observation that the outback seems similar to Mars? Well, you were right on. The outback isn't just red. It's very dry with lots of sand and exposed rock. It's actually a lot like the surface of Mars. A while ago, we learned about Mars rovers and how they can drive around and explore Mars for us. And engineers like to test their designs before they send them into space. Because the outback is like Mars, it can be a great place for doing those tests. Ooh, hey Squeaks, how do you think you'd adapt yourself if we ever visited the outback? Mm. Oh wow, you are looking so cool and very adapted, Squeaks. Looks like all your research is paying off. Hey there, Squeaks and I have been learning all about Australia and the wonderful creatures that live there. <laughs> Squeaks says his favorite was the kangaroo. He's learned that some of them have pouches and he's imagining what he could carry if he had a pouch too. Let's see, snacks, some toys, a notebook, great ideas. Though if we went on a hike with a kangaroo, that kangaroo would still have to carry a backpack. The pouch on a kangaroo isn't just any pocket. A kangaroo parent's pouch is a special place for a baby kangaroo to stay safe as it gets bigger. See, a baby kangaroo, called a joey, is only about the size of a grape when it's first born. I know, that's way, way smaller than a baby human, or even a kitten or a puppy. That's why the pouch is so wonderful. The joey stays in its mother's pouch for about four months. It drinks its mother's milk and stays safe and warm while it grows bigger and bigger, until it's big enough to hop out on its own. <laughs> oh, good thinking, Squeaks. 
He noticed that our neighbor's puppies didn't hide out in a pouch. Only some animals, like kangaroos, have pouches. This group of animals is called marsupials. And there are lots of different kinds of marsupials. Like, check out the wombat, another Australian marsupial. It also carries its young in a pouch until the baby gets bigger. And here's an animal you might know. You're right! Koalas are marsupials too! In fact, lots of the animals in Australia are marsupials. All marsupials are kinds of mammals. Mammals have hair and give milk to their babies. <laughs> right, like dogs, cats, lions, and horses are also mammals. They have hair and feed their young milk. But most mammals carry their young inside their bodies until the babies are big enough to survive on their own. That's right, most marsupials carry their young in pouches. <laughs> oh, well, if we wanted to see a marsupial, we'd need to go to a zoo. See, most of the world's marsupials live in Australia. Ooh, great question. To answer that, let's pretend to take a visit to Australia. As it looked 300 million years ago, that's very long ago, before even the dinosaurs. If we could travel back in time, we'd see that most of Earth's land was clumped together, like this. But the land didn't stay that way. Over a long time, it spread apart until it finally started to look like the maps of Earth that we see today. And see, Australia is surrounded on all sides by water. It's an island. So if you or I wanted to get to Australia, we would have to either take an airplane or take a boat. There's no other way to get on or off. So the animals that were on Australia as it moved apart from that big clump of land, unless they could fly or swim, were pretty much stuck on the island. But that process took a super long time. So long that the animals on Australia changed in a way to fit into the place where they live. Animals that fit in well where they live have an easier time getting around, finding food, and doing other things it takes to survive. We call this adapting. And a pouch has turned out to be pretty helpful in helping animals like koalas and kangaroos to survive. Why? Hmm, that's the cool thing. Scientists aren't exactly sure why, but they do have some pretty good ideas. For example, pouches mean that mother marsupials don't need to stay in one place to take care of their babies. Koalas can keep climbing and kangaroos can keep hopping, all the better to stay safe and to find food to eat. It's parenting on the go. And speaking of being on the go, I said that if we wanted to see most kinds of marsupials, we'd need to go to a zoo or Australia. But, well, there is one kind of marsupial that lives right here in North America, and one of them dropped by to visit the fort today. <laughs> this kind of marsupial is called a Virginia opossum. Now, he can't show us a pouch because He's a boy, and it's usually the mother marsupials who have pouches. This is Pinto, and he's only a couple months old, so he's still pretty small, and he's going to get a lot bigger. Opossums usually live two or three years, and in that time, he's going to go from this size to this size. One of the neatest things about opossums is their tail. They use this tail to help them grip as they're climbing around. And you'll notice there's not very much hair back here. If you notice, Pinto is using his senses to discover things around him. And one of his best senses is his sense of smell. He also has these amazing ears to help him hear. But opossums are not very good at seeing. So if something scary comes along, they're going to do a couple things to help them survive. The first thing that Pinto might do is open his mouth really wide, show off all of his sharp teeth, and hiss. If that doesn't scare away the scary thing, then he's actually going to get so scared he's going to pass out from fright. When he passes out, he will actually fall over, open his mouth, his tongue will hang out, and he'll start drooling. And then he will give off a really stinky smell that makes him smell like he's maybe died and gone bad or he's really sick. And that scary animal will hopefully leave him alone. This is called playing dead or playing possum. Squeaks, aren't you glad that we got to see North America's only marsupial right here at the fort? 
If you want to have fun with me, Squeaks, and all of our friends, and Pinto, you can subscribe to SciShow Kids. And we'll see you next time here at the fort. <laughs>